On a fine winter's day, on Saturday the 14th of July 1906, many Melburnians made their way to Flemington Racecourse for the Grand National Steeplechase. During the afternoon, they would witness a shocking act of mob violence that had implications right to the top of the state government. At the time, gambling was seen by many to be a significant social ill. Lay preacher William Judkins and Methodist minister Henry Worrell were particularly vehement opponents. They laid responsibility at the feet of the government's chief secretary and minister for labour, Samuel Gillett, who is primarily responsible for the regulation of gambling in the state. Horse racing was a popular sport and the Grand National Meeting drew a large crowd, including the wealthy, the unscrupulous and the desperate. During the afternoon, Donald Big Mick McLeod set himself up as a bookmaker on the flat. He'd arrived intending only taking bets on the Grand National, but when many punters wanted to bet on Lady Doris in the first race, McLeod thought it would be easy money. Lady Doris, though, flew home to win the race. McLeod gave back the bets of the successful punters, promising to settle the winnings later. This was a practice known as scaling. Bookmaking was unlicensed and poorly regulated, and scaling was common. McLeod seemed unconcerned and took bets on the next race. Again, he was unable to pay out and scaled disgruntled winners. The Grand National Steeplechase was a brutal affair with stone and fixed wooden fences raced over 5,000 metres. Hoping for a change of fortune, McLeod took 47 shillings in wages on the Grand National, including some large bets on the second favourite decoration. Unfortunately for Donald McLeod, Decoration took the lead in the straight and won easily. The result left McLeod with a payout of £4.10. shillings. It was money he didn't have. He again returned bets, promising to pay the balance of the winnings later. The punters were angry. McLeod began to retreat, but he was chased. He was struck several times and the pursuing mob grew larger. As they closed about him, other racegoers tried to intervene. There were cries of, give him fair play. Is human life worth a few shillings? But to no avail. When constables finally arrived and dispersed the crowd, McLeod lay dead. The inquest into his death commenced two days later. Several men were arrested, but there was insufficient evidence to charge them. The next day at the Wesley Church, preacher William Judkins delivered a passionate address. There was a body lying in the morgue today, with face all red and blue and purple, murdered, all because of this evil. Who did it? The gamblers did it. In a sermon in Bendigo, Reverend Henry Worrell went further. There are men sitting in the Houses of Parliament, upon whose heads rested the blood of this man. Sir Samuel Gillett sits in high authority, and I impeach that man tonight, in God's name, with the red blood that has been flowing from the wounds of gambling. Samuel Gillett and his Premier Thomas Bent were incensed by Henry Worrell's comments. Reverend Worrell was summoned to appear before Parliament, charged with uttering a false and unchristian libel upon members of the House. Reverend Worrell was farewelled by a large crowd of supporters in Bendigo and greeted by another crowd in Melbourne. The parliamentary censure descended into farce with a long, turgid debate around the wording of the reprimand. Standing before Parliament, as his supporters sang outside, Reverend Worrell refused to withdraw his statements. Samuel Gillett soon faced more trouble than the accusations of Reverend Worrell. Various financial dealings that he had had with the notorious brothel owner Madame Brussels became public and his enemies went after him. 
his nemesis William Judkins demanded his removal, and the Truth newspaper unleashed a vitriolic attack, forcing Samuel Gillett's resignation. The shocking death of Donald MacLeod did precipitate legislative action with the Lotteries, Gaming and Betting Act, substantially drafted by Samuel Gillett, been passed into law in December 1906.